oxybenzone. Does anybody know what oxybenzone is found in? Sunscreen. Sunscreen is the thing that's killing and bleaching the coral reefs of the world. It doesn't take very much. Wait. Just recently, recently described. So, <clears throat> we brought the mass tourism. So we've come from paradise found to paradise lost. And then you could probably ask the question, well, now that I've really dragged you down, <laughs> why, would you, why would you want to be rascals in paradise, right? So in the last 25 years, my lovely assistant and I would, because we have to go here, would stop off. There's only 21 here, don't count, because I missed one. Uh, would stop off in various places, and we would spend a month. And one day I woke up and I said, you know, that could be a book. <laughs> and there it is. So there's the, there's the table of contents. There's amnesia, because I forgot that could be a book. Uh, Latinesia, which is some, some islands off the coast of, um, of, of Chile. Indonesia, Melanesia, Micronesia, Polynesia, Anglonesia, which Paul Thoreau calls Meganesia, because he thinks Norfolk Island was a big island. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read you some excerpts. We got time? <laughs> Uh, I'm going to do the most beautiful beach in the world in Vanuatu. I'm going to do Big Money because Barb's here. I'm going to do <laughs> I'm going to do Mysterious Paradise of Mud in Kashrai. Uh, if I have time, I'm going to do Far Away. I'm definitely going to do Tahiti because we had some experience. And I'm going to do the Blood and Wine Glass Bay. Okay, so you're not you're only going to get a glimpse of it, which is what my intent was because. You want to buy the book, right? Yeah. All right, so the first, the first uh, set of islands we're going to go to is Vanuatu, which used to be, does anyone know? Used to be the New Hebrides condominium. That's the only kind of condominium I like, right? Because French English condominium, right? In fact, this is an actual stamp from the New Hebrides condominium, one of the older ones, and um, it's titled uh, uh, Presbyter Cositis, which means basically cook, cooked missionary. And that's a missionary. <laughs> so you're going to have stamps, you may as well be true to them. And this is from an island called Espiritu Santo. So this is, this is a whole shoot match here of Vanuatu, right? And you, so you fly into Port Vila, right? And then you have to get another puddle jumper up to Luganville. And, and what my lovely assistants and I do when we travel is, um, I basically beat her to death and we travel as far as we can before the roads run out and the water runs out and, and a mile beyond the last ice cube and where the smoke detectors turn into to geckos, you know, and then we work our way back to civilization. Right? So when the time we went to Espiritu Santo, there was only two roads. There was an interior road, which was really ugly, came back that way, and there was a coastal road that went up to a place called Hog Harbor. And we were going there because just near there was the most beautiful beach in the world, or so it was thought. It was called Champagne Beach, and it was owned by a guy named Mr. Toto. Mr. Toto charged two vata, or 12 cents, to get onto his beach. We were going. And so we needed a place to stay because Mr. Toto didn't have camping ground. So we went to a place called Lonok Bungalows, the furthermost ex you know, extension you could go and still have a bed of some kind, uh, eight, eight bungalows, okay. Um, and then, I didn't realize it at the time, but there was a parable to the story that was going to happen, okay. And the parable was this. This is Kava. This is Piper Methysticum. And in Melanesia, in parts of Polynesia, uh, people consume the, 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 the sort of uh, scrunched up uh, roots in dishwater uh, because it, it kind of gives you a, a, it makes you kind of drowsy, but it numbs everything in your body and you become loquacious, you start talking like an idiot, right? So the guys, the guys would get together and do that because they do in most, most cultures. And the women would work. Uh, <laughs> so this is kava, and, they're, and, and they're, it was, the, the drinking of this was ritualized. And the thing about kava was, the most potent kava in the entire, on the entire planet was from the New Hebrides, was from Vanuatu, was from Espiritu Santo. And we had had it in other places. And that was the place it originated from, but we never had it like we had it there. The other thing on the right, okay, is um, Fano, uh, flying fox. And, and the thing about flying foxes is, um, there's different kinds, and I didn't know it at the time, I promise you I did not, but the Vanuatu flying fox uh, was actually in danger. But they eat it, you know, especially after cyclones, because they come out of the trees. This flying fox has a wingspan of five feet. 
this is a huge fine fox, right? So you have your English here and your Latin here, and this is Bislama. So I have to tell you about Bislama because Bislama is the is the language of Vanuatu, and it's it's a black burner language. It was taught to the natives who worked on, on the slave plantations as a, as a lingua franca. Um, and it's a funny language because the words are, are it's just bizarre the way they nail them together. So for example, um, uh, gasoline is called benzene belong truck. And uh, beer is called benzene belong men. And um, a brazier is a titty basket. And, uh, and a piano is uh, white man baka si got black teeth he got him white teeth you fight him hard he sing up. <laughs> and a violin is for you Eric. Uh, white man baka you scratch him belly he sing up. <laughs> so it's that kind of language, right? And I didn't speak Bislama and they didn't speak English, so it got real fun. Okay. So I'm going to tell you this story. This is where we're staying in Lenoc, uh, Lenoc uh, bungalows. So I guess it's time to work. Just give me a second. I wish I had a mic, but I don't. So. All right, so settle in. <clears throat> An outrigger canoe rested on the soft telt beach, balanced between a cobalt sky and a turquoise sea. There were no other guests. Robin and I stowed our packs in the box of bad Aussie Shiraz transported from Luganville in our bungalow and stretched out in the shade of a nearby palm. Rosario's smile approached with a question. Ian, I buy you two fella one of kai He asked. What do you want to eat tonight? Robin and I thought about it. A flying fox flapped overhead. We had heard about Sivi de Usit and made inquiry. You two fella one you two fella one flying fox? He asked. We nodded, a little tentatively. Okay, he said, you two fella one cava face time? We nodded a little more tentatively. We had heard about the local kava too. Vanuatu was the original home of kava and reputed to be the strongest in the southern sea. It was usually consumed in local kava clubhouses called nakamals, signaled by a glass lantern at the entrance and the glassy eyes and waxy candles and expressions inside. Santo's kava potency came from two factors. First, it was prepared by chewing the roots, producing finer particles in the paste, and then spat into as the final brew. The second source of potency came from the concentration of cavalactone dihydromethysticine in Vanuatu Kavu. It came from the potency, period. <coughs> Some varieties were known as two day kava because their psychoactive effects would last for two days. Okay, he said again, checking his list. You two fellow want them kava with them flying focus. Robert and I briefly considered the animal and vegetable consistence, consist, constituents of our dinner, shrugged and nodded. It wasn't clear what the precise wine match was for large bats, but I thought the box of Aussie Shiraz could probably handle it. A few minutes later, we saw Rosario and Alima walk by our bungalow with what appeared to be a loaded 12-gauge shotgun. Robin threw me a stare. I tossed it back. Not long after that, a low-pitched Bislama Kablama echoed off to our right, followed by a black punctuation mark spiraling down out of a tree. The sky grew brown black with pandemonium long enough for all but one more Bislama Kablama victim to scatter like the rings in a pond. Two sets of white teeth went by as they walked back beside our bungalow, proudly holding up dinner. Flying focus, said Olima, <laughs> smiling. As the sun began its decline toward the horizon on dusk, Rosaria called us to a picnic table near the open kitchen. The mosquitoes were ferocious. We set our wine bucket beside the hurricane lantern and received two half coconut shells filled with dishwater. We recognized the potion and its characteristic nose from our Fiji bitter experience with Reese on Kandavu. But this would be different. Palala <coughs> surkala, said Olima. Vanuatu bitter. I recognized the name as one of the two-day varieties. I noticed both him and Rosario standing back like it was flammable. <laughs> Number one, he added. <coughs> Robin and I threw it back like we had before on Fiji, just before what happened next happened next. 
Just after we heard Rosario and Olima swallow their sharp gasps, the mosquitoes disappeared. <laughs> the ones that could. <laughs> and then the sun went down, not like we'd ever seen it set before, but throwing rose petals and white chrysanthemums and green lightning bolts. It was all very quiet and kaleidoscopic, and the clouds layered up luminous like they'd been poured into a lava lamp. The sky exploded into a tsunami of Novocaine, paralyzing everything from our noses down. The only thing we could feel was our saliva. What arrived next under a dribble didn't help at all. On my plate, it looked like someone had dismembered a large bat and tried to reassemble it with yams and taro and island cabbage. It was never going to fly again. We managed to find Rosario and Olima's teeth in the darkness. Bon appetit, they said, or something like that in Islam. It was a kind of encouragement that would have been more than rude to have ignored, so we managed to get enough of our fingers working to tackle the bat. There are far too many textures. Most meat can be compared even remotely to chicken, except for the black chewy stuff on our plate that night. The small broken bones were an invitation to painfully choking to death, especially since we were barely able to swallow it or chew without confusing our food with our frozen tongues. <laughs> the stretchy rubber skin of the gossamer wings of the thing was a bit like fruit leather. Well, the fruit. I spat a small metallic ping onto my plate and heard it ricochet off. Much for buckshot, I said. <clears throat> Rosario and Olima had poured Robin and I a glass of our box Shiraz, the consumption of which absolutely, in combination with the pre-dinner cabot cocktail, brought us as far from utopia as we would ever be in our lives. On the way back to our bungalow, I looked back to see our hosts, smiling, clearly confused about the difference between being contented and being crippled. <laughs> <laughs> so we went to see Champagne Beach, and we were on Champagne Beach, and there was nobody on Champagne Beach.